been a hell of a week, guys. <laughs> So welcome back to our town, aren't we? Welcome back to another video on the channel. Now, it's been a bit of a big week. Um, I think that's fair to say. It's a bit of a week where there's a lot of shit going around, to put it politely. Um, all started with the one order at home to Newport last week. Twitter was boring and depressed. Uh, we then got onto Nigel Farage holding Grimsby shirt. To uh, to Jolly, to Jolly leaving by mutual consent. To his leaked video and. Just the fact that John Fenty is still talking about his takeover, which feels like it's gone on for about a year. So, we've got a lot to get through in this video. If you do go on to enjoy this video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you're new. But we've got a hell of a lot of stuff to talk about today, so let's get on with it. So, I say this all sh this all shit started with Newport at home last week. It finished one all in the FA Cup. We got the replay coming up on Wednesday night. Um, it was a very poor game. Very, It was a very poor performance from the Mariners. Um... I thought the in-game management was poor. The tactics were poor. The play, most of the players looked really poor. And um, when you checking Twitter after a poor performance after a town game is a very negative place, as I've come to find out recently. So um, it's not like everyone was angry; they were just disappointed on Twitter. In, in, well, I didn't really want to reply, but you, you could see what they, they were getting on with, and um, you'll see where they were coming from. It was just. Depressing, where's this going to end? I don't know where the next win's going to come from. It wasn't really moaning. There was a few jolly outs um, in there. But it was more depressing because we were struggling to see where the next win will come from. We've And we've got games coming up. We've got Newport on Wednesday in the FA Cup away. We've got Northampton away next week. And we and depending if we get through the FA Cup, um, we, play, we play Swindon like, the, like three or four weeks after. And yeah, they're flight high at the minute. So... We're all struggling to see where this next win is going to come from. We've we've just looked a very poor side. We've had one good month in August where we lost one out of a possible, what, five, six? I can't remember how many games we played, but we only lost one game, and that was to Forest Green that month. So we had an excellent start. And um, it all started going downhill at around, after we played Exeter when we beat them 3-1. Uh, we were 3-0 up in that game. I think the thing is, we played... A front three that day of um, Akeem Rose on the left, Max Wright on the right, and Moses Ockbu up front. And um, we just we just tore extra apart. I think we was, they was expecting us to play James Hansen. I think that was probably why they wasn't expecting that. So um, two goals from um, Ethan Robson and a penalty from Moses Ogbu secured all, all three points for the Mariners. It was a very good performance as um, Exeter were unbeaten. Um, Going into that game, there was them beating like the last 14. I reckon if they would have not lost one more, I think there was close to a club record. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah. Um, but the, my biggest problem was the way that Jolly just sh converted back to the same team he's been sticking with all season, back for the next game. And um, my instant thoughts was why? Why are we changing a winning team that's that's gone away to the league leaders at the time? And got an incredible result. Why are we changing this up again? It's I, I don't get it. The football's been boring recently. It's just been very poor to watch. It feels like we're lumping it up to Hanson far too much, and we've just we haven't really got the creativity. We're sending Charles Vernon back out on loan, and it, he's one of our most creative players at the club. What, what, this this squad is lacking creativity, and the fact that we're sending Charles Vernon out on loan is. Is bizarre. I'm not sure if he had a. I'm not sure if he got on along with Jolly. I don't know, but I would. I would have loved to seen him stay. Um, so I think that was where it all started going wrong. Twitter was just really boring. I say, um, like I said, going to Twitter after a poor town performance, it's not the best of sites you want to be seen on a Saturday evening. So, um, yeah, I've I've sort of got that bit out of the way. Just the fact recent performances. Have just not been good enough, but um, we're we're gonna get onto another t subject now. And um, you might have seen recently um a picture of Nigel Farage where uh not wearing but holding up a Grimsby shirt with his name at the back. Um, of course, there's some people if you didn't know um Nigel Farage visited Grimsby on like on like a day out, essentially, and delivers a sp speech in the McMenemy Suite at Blundell Park. 
What an absolutely shocking decision this was from the club. Why are we letting this man take over my memories? I mean, I don't know much about politics, don't get me wrong. I'm not a politics guy. You're the p la I'm the last person to ask if you want to know about politics. But I do know how much Nigel Farage... M Nigel Farage? Nigel Farage is such a wanker. Why, why are we putting him... Why are we relating him to our club at all? Very poor decision from the book. I rec I would have thought John Fenty had to do something about that. Maybe not. I'm not too sure. But why? Why are we doing this? Shocking decision from the board. And honestly, I re I was so pissed off when I saw that photo. Um, I don't like Nigel Farage. I really don't. I think he's a dickhead. Um, it. No, I, I do not want to see that on my club. I want politics to stay out of my football club. Thank you very much. Um, of course, I'm not... You're you're the last. I'm the last person to ask whether politics about politics really. Um, yeah, such a shit move from the club. Can't lie about that. Um, absolutely fuming when I saw that photo. And it, not gonna lie, it made me depressed and disgusted to be a town fan that day. Honestly, you don't know. Twitter lost its shit, as in absolute big time. They absolutely lost the plot, and rightly so. Why are we doing this? Why are we getting Nigel in in our base to to talk about well all the politics shit, Brexit, God knows what. Why are we doing it at our stadium? If it was anywhere else, I probably wouldn't have been this pissed off. But the fact he was holding a town shirt. Really, oh my god, it fueled me with anger that. You, you, you don't understand, I was absolutely fuming. Um, but like like I said, I was, emba I was embarrassed to be a town fan when I saw that photo. Embarrassed to be a town fan. Because if this is what, if this is what football's come to, I'm, <laughs> I'm very disappointed. Um, so, um, yeah, we're, we're going back to the uh, recent performances and... As you know, on, on Friday, Grimsby Town parted company with manager by mutual consent. Now, it, he de Michael departed by mutual consent. He wasn't sacked. Honestly, he wasn't sacked. Um, he was. He thought, look, I've, there's, there, there was no way he was coming back from what he's done. And if you've not heard of what he's done recently, um, I've heard of a few outbursts of what he's had. Um, I, I heard he was um, starting on a fan at... And we lost at 4-0 at home to Leighton Orient. And I, I believe he got dragged down the tunnel by Anthony Lindbrook. But I tell you now, I've never, I've never heard anything like this. Um, what I'm going to play to you now is is, the Mike, is what Michael Jolly was saying to BBC Radio Humberside after we lost 4-0 at home to Leighton Orient. Um, it's about four minutes long, but I'm just going to warn you now. Um... This is not for the faint-hearted. Normally, Jolly is a, normal, is a normally calm guy. Um, but I can understand this game. We just lost 4-0 to Leighton Orient. And tempers are flying high. So, I, w I, want, to, I want to play this video. There's no, there's no um, video footage. So, we're just going to put some pictures up in Michael instead. Um, quick warning. Um, there's a lot of colourful and foul language in this. Um, what I've heard, there's a total of 58 swear words in this. So, brace yourself. It's just too, too much to bleep. So... Um, I present to you what Michael Jolly said to um, BBC Radio Humberside um, reporters John Tonder and Matt Dean after the 4-0 defeat to Leighton Orient. Have a listen to this. If you've not listened to it yet, you're in for a treat, honestly. Um, take a listen to this. Fucking you and 
fucking run and criticise and play man for man at Chelsea. I go on the fucking Monday night show to fuck it as a basic rock because he's a professional journalist and he's a fucking straight shooter. And you don't fucking ask me a question. Oh, fair, man. Or when I go off, you say, yeah, it was the wrong decision to play man for man. Gwen was criticising it. I was criticising it. Fucking ask me that. Ask me that. But it's a thing, but why are you asking the fucking manager? Because you've got no bollocks. You've got no fucking bollocks. You've got to be snipe behind people's fucking back. Every fucking manager of this football club has had a problem with you. Every manager has had a fucking problem. Yeah, every single manager has had a problem with you. Every manager. Okay. I've fucking spoke to them all. Trust me. About you as an individual. And fucking Burns is an absolute fucking disgrace as well. Fucking disgrace. What you've just heard was quite extraordinary. Um, we're just going to speak a little bit about this. Um, of course, if you knew Michael, uh, he was always... A, he sounded a very calm guy normally. Um, he was calm with everything he does. He looked fairly calm on the touchline as well. Um, but safe to say, he completely lost the plot after we lost 4-0 at home to Leighton Orient. Um, my thoughts on this video are a bit mixed. I mean, Jolly's right. I've, he's right. Um, BBC Radio Homicide, if you've ever listened to it, is so bloody negative. Because you've got a few. Matt Dean is Matt Dean. Um, he's always had a bit of a problem with other managers, especially Russell Slade last season. Uh, John Tonder's one of the most liked people at the club. Um, I really like John. Um, he's got Grims Grimsby in his blood. And um, you've got Dave Burns, on the other hand. He only gives a shit about Hull. So it's everything you hear... On BBC Radio Homicide is so negative, and I totally agree with Michael in this case. Uh, we lost four nils, and they're trying to look out for the negatives. There's n there's no positives to take away f from what they're saying whatsoever. Ra rarely, so Michael is is sort of right, and uh, I do agree because honestly, H BBC Radio Homicide asks the most stupid and weirdest questions as well sometimes. But I can't lie either. Michael's also in the wrong. Um, going off like he did uh, is just not right um if you're a manager at a football club um you've got to show that bit of class and unfortunately michael just didn't show that class um is that uh john fenton even said that was one of the reasons why i left um he was gonna 
open disciplinary action. Um, but Michael decided that he wanted to resign instead. He knew what was coming. You can sort of tell he regrets it as well. Um, but it's just it's just a sticky situation at the minute. And it's just been a very hard time for everyone at the club at the moment. Um, once I've heard this. I'm not going to lie. This took me by surprise. And it's not the best audio. This is the best I can do. Um, took me by surprise. Big time. Um, but, you know, some someone's got to say it. Because... Um, BBC Radio Humberside proper gets on my nerves sometimes, and um, like Michael said in that in that um, in whatever that is rant, like Michael said, um, every ma no wonder every manager at this football club um, thinks it said that every football manager at this club um, has something bad about you, and um, yeah, to I actually do agree with him. Um, Homicide's just weird, and um, John Fenty's been speaking about this as well. Um, we've got a few words from John, the um, well, the um, majority shareholder at the club. He said the club and personnel at the club ha haven't haven't bathed themselves in glory. Um, it's fair to say a little bit of a rant took place between the manager and particularly BBC Radio Humberside. In that context, we was a few, which was a few weeks ago now. The board of directors knew nothing about it, so they didn't know, know anything about this. Apparently, BBC Radio Humberside complained. Um, roughly 10 days ago, it surfaced that there was a video in play. Um, there was a recording of what happened. Yeah, because some snake somehow recorded it. Um, after after listening to what was said, it was a matter of the fact that the club would need to take disciplinary proceedings, which they started to do. That began with a form of investigation. That's how it came to light. So, um, yeah, there's an altercation down the tunnel as well, which I won't go into as the investigation found out one question reasonably answered. So, um, there was alright with that. Um, but there was a need for disciplinary hearing that was due to be heard last Friday. So, it was going to be on Friday, um, like Jolly was going to get like some sort of fine or something. Um, but it also goes on to say, Michael came to me on Wednesday morning and his view was he knew where he was going. We saw an opportunity for a compromise agreement on leaving on mutual grounds. So, um, John Fenty confirmed that he wasn't sacked. Uh, he wasn't sacked at all. Um, we're really disappointed with the whole affair. On a personal level, I was particularly concerned and disappointed. Um, there were mentions to the budget and, and growing in the press, suggesting they, su suggesting they should have said something about the budget in the past. I find that a strange comment, however. When, when things aren't going well on the field, it is a pressure cooker. And we do give allowance to things that erupt over. On the scale of eruption, it's clear that the football club have had to go through a disciplinary process and anybody that thinks otherwise need to think again. So I I agree I agree with John. Um I think he's to be fair, I think he's handled it the best he possibly can. It's a difficult situation to handle. Um But I think I think he's done it the best he can. Um uh, Fenty also goes on to say he was shocked and stunned. Um it was a serious tirade and it was. It really was. Um it's a very difficult situation to be in. It's it's something you don't really see every day. You don't really see managers losing their minds to uh, other reporters um, of the press. Um, remember Joe Kinnear at Newcastle? Um, I think Michael's just beating that. But um, no, I, I'm I'm currently I'm currently mixed on the whole thing. Um, it's it's a very interesting story, and um, I do think that's a reason. That's probably the biggest reason why he left. I think he does regret it. I think he does. But look, we we have to move on now. Um, what? Yes, I'm. Um, Jolly's right, but no, he's wrong. If you get what I mean, anyway. Um, yes, he's right. BBC Radio Humberside literally just takes things so negatively, and they they try to put like words into people's mouths, basically. And uh, Jolly's also wrong because the the way he handled it, I can't lie, it's poor. And um, would you could probably say it's gross misconduct. Um, but yeah, that's that's really all I can say about it. It's um. It's a very difficult situation to handle, and it's not going to lie, something I didn't see coming at all, especially someone from Michael, but I have wished him all the best on Twitter. Um, I, I still like Michael. Um, I do think he'll get another job. Um, like like I said um, in a video I did the other day about him leaving, um, I do wish him all the best. Um, it, I did thank him on Twitter, and he, he did reply to me saying that he watched some of my videos as well. So, um, look, very thankful for Michael. Really am. He's a nice bloke. Um, I'm sure he'll get another job in the future, but... Yeah, like like I said, just a very cool, diff very difficult situation to be in at this moment in time.
Now, sticking with John, um, there's been some more takeover news that has been coming from his mouth recently. Um, in an interview on a club's website, um, he said there was there's been two interested parties, um, and the whole thing is very frustrating because it has dragged out for quite a lot a very long time. Um, it has been dragging out, but what what John said, it, it all really comes down to proof of funds, basically. Um, we believe there's there's two people in in the um, in role for this. Uh, Tom Schutz has been going on since the summer. Um, he's still interested in taking over the club. And Colin Dodd, who I believe tried was it wasn't him that tried to buy Notts County or was the owner at Notts County at one point. I'm not too sure, but I, I think he had to do something with Notts. Um, yeah, we, we've got a few things of what um, John Fenty's been saying. Um, he said, uh, yeah, like I said, it, it's been staggering for quite a long time now, and it has. Um, he said it ultimately comes down to proof of funds. If the football club cannot be satisfied in the context that that the money that the monies are there, it simply cannot happen. And to be fair, you've got you've got to give credit to John Fenty. He what really wants the best for this football club. He's trying to sell, which is pretty much what most people want. Um, he is trying to sell, so you've got to give him credit for that. But he, I could tell, he wants to take his time with this because he wants to sell to the right man who will take this club forward and make sure the club is in safe safe hands financially as well so you've got to give him some credit for this um he also goes on to say it's not just monies around acquiring my share stock of playing of paying loans off this is about meaningfully running the football club going forward and knowing what sort of liabilities the club would incur um if we're going to bring additional costs into the building whether it's to relocate or whatever i'd like to seek assurance how this will be covered um so yeah i i agree with john um what you're saying here um, I really do. Um, he also goes on to say, "I've been here for 19 years, suffering a six by two over the back of the head for fun. If I could have found somebody I generally felt was ready, capable, and able to take this club for take this club forward, I would have I would have ditched out a long time ago." So you could tell John Fenty's had this idea to sell the football club for quite a long time. Um, he also goes on to say, "I don't think anyone should be mad enough to to walk." To want to be involved in a football club for 19 years and longer, it is a time. It is time to hang my boots up. But the last thing I'm going to do is hang them up in a situation where it's not clear where what the football club is in for, and and that the board and trust haven't appraised and approved the process. So you've got to give Matt credit to John. He really wants the best for this football club, and um, we've got to sell to the right man. Basically, we don't want to be like in the situation like the. Like teams like Berry and Macclesfield and Oldham are going through at the minute. We want we we need to be financially secure. Um, it's very much on the pitch, but off it as well. We need to be secure. We need to make sure we can pay off like debts and all that and all all that shit. And yeah, he he really wants to sell to the right man. We also need ambition with the club as well. That's I, that's generally I've been saying this to a few people. There's no ambition with John Fenty at the moment. There is really no um, ambition. So, I, I reckon if we do sell, um, of course, we're still looking at a new stadium. We're still looking to, well, to, to go up basically to uh, to start fighting for, because because really we've we've got one of the best histories in the in the uh, league too. Um, we've got got some cracking history. Um, we 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 need to, we need to be up there challenging, competing with the rest. And I'm keep I keep saying this: it's not going to happen until. There's investment in the club. I know Fenty's invested a bit, but not an awful lot to be competing really. So, I think whether it's, whether we when we can sell the club really the better, and hope hopefully it's for the better as well. Um, but like I said, you've got to, you've got to praise um, John Fenty because he doesn't want to leave it. He doesn't want to leave the club broken and absolutely on its knees like Barry House. So you've got to give him some credit in that aspect. Now I'm just going to speak about one more thing, and that's the manager search. That is taking place at the moment. Um, of course, Michael Jolly left his role on Friday, so that means Anthony Limbrick um, will be the um, interim manager uh, for the time being. He'll definitely take game. He'll, tef he'll definitely manage the game on Wednesday at Wayne Newport. Um, it's been con confirmed today that he's got Ben Davis, the former um, Grimsby Town defender, to help him out with him. He's been he's been starting to take his coaching badges. Um, I like Ben. It's good to see him back involved with the club. Um, whether Limbrick. I've got that feeling that Limbrick will take the job till the rest of the season. Does it? Does anyone else think that? 
I generally think get a few decent performances together. I reckon I reckon Limbrick could have it for the rest of the season. But some of the names that are being mentioned, um, the bookies' favourite at the minute seems to be Kevin Nolan, the former Notts County manager. I personally don't want him. Um, if I'm going to be honest, um, he's someone that likes to play hoofball apparently, and um, I, I reckon we can go for someone else. Uh, Paul Tisdale's another name flying around. It, I mean, I'd love to have him, but I think it's a, I think it's a dream. Um, I, I don't think he'll come all the way that up. I'd be very surprised if he does join. But um, one of the, one of the favourites as well, and um, I'm willing to give this guy a go. It's Robbie Stockdale, um, the former. The former Grimsby Town player. Um, I am willing to give him a go. Um, I think he stated he wants to, he wants to uh, start first team managing because uh, he's had a few assistant roles. He's just left Hibernian as an assistant, and um, he's been an assistant at Sunderland a few times. Um, I won't mind giving him a go. He's a young manager, up and coming manager. I believe it was linked with him when we sacked Slade, but I, I, I mean, I don't know. Um, we'll, we'll have to see. We should, there was just a few candidates for the role and. It just comes out for the best one, really, and who I th and who will get the job. But um, I do think, me personally, I reckon Limbrick will take it for the rest of the season. I've got that feeling. Um, it's neither that or Kevin Nolan's going to come in. I think that's probably the most likely. Um, and we'll have to we'll have to we'll have to see it from there. But um, Anthony's got a big big game um, with the team coming up on Wednesday night. Newport in the FA Cup first round replay. Um, an away day at Bowers and Pitsy coming up. Uh, Bowers and Pitsy, no, what am I on about? Um, Molden and Tiptree, I do apologise. Um, yeah, we've got, and that could be on the BBC cameras, so it's, it's a big game. We just need to just give it our own Newport and hopefully get into the second round of the FA Cup, which which would be nice, really. So this is where I'm going to wrap up the video. It's been a long one, guys, I'm not going to lie. But if you have enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you're new. Uh, there'll neither be a Newport preview, neither tomorrow night, or Wednesday afternoon, probably Wednesday afternoon, I've got, excuse me, is where I've got a bit more time, so I might do it there. So, um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. You've been watching all the time, aren't we? Have a good day.